Okay, 14.7, okay, that will be the part 3 of the chemical reaction of alkyl. Okay, so our previous videos, we talked about the alkyl react with the acid, acidic gas, ammonium ion. Today, we're going to talk about the metal ion, okay? Remember, okay, in previous video, we emphasized it is metal ion, not metal. So, how the reaction will look like? First of all, okay, you have to know that, okay, the reaction with metal ions, okay, it looks like this, okay, we have the metal ion in form of a solution. It can be magnesium sulfate, it can be magnesium nitrate, it can be magnesium chloride, many different forms. As long as uh, the ionic compound solutions, it contains magnesium ion, where well, actually it will have reaction. So, how does the reaction look like? The magnesium ion, okay, will then combine with the hydroxide ion. So you see that, okay, this cation combined with this anion, okay, I draw like this. So the cation, okay, of the salts combined with the hydroxide ion of the alkaline, then they will form magnesium hydroxide. And this product, okay, you have to pay attention, okay, it is in a solid state. That means that, okay, you will see some solid form in the process, while for the rest, okay, the sulfate ion and also sodium ion here, okay, they will recombine to form the aqueous form, okay, the uh, sodium sulfate. So you can see that, okay, if I draw it uh, right in an ion equation, actually the aqueous state one, okay, we can break it down into ion. The aqueous one can be break down into ion. So basically, okay, the sulfate here and the sodium ion here, actually they will be eliminated at the end, okay. So what you have remaining, okay, we only have this equation. So the main our chemical part, okay, that react, okay, in the reactions, that should be the metal ion, react with the hydroxide ion. So basically, okay, uh, I highly recommend you for writing equations uh, between the alkaline with the metal ion, okay, I highly recommend you to use our equation to write because that will be much more easier, okay. And also, uh, later on, you'll learn that sometimes the alkaline that will involve, okay, they doesn't look like a sodium hydroxide, for example, ammonia, okay, then at that time, okay, if you use an equation, that will be much easier, okay, so basically, okay, uh, to replicate this equation is so simple, if you think that, we, oh, this one with a Fe3 plus solution, Fe3 plus ion solutions, okay, and then it reacts with an alkaline, I don't care if it's sodium hydroxide or ammonia, if it reacts with alkaline, you basically write hydroxide ion, to represent the alkaline solutions will do. Okay, just like H plus represent the acid, OH minus represent the alkaline. Okay, so if you put it like that way, okay, then you will see that, okay, we have three plus and then one minus. So when we combine them, okay, it should have FeOH bracket three. So this is the solid state, okay, the precipitate. Then I will write solid there. Okay, so the ion equation will be like that. Okay, if you remember, I did mention, okay, if the question asks you to write a chemical equation, it will be all right for you to write an ion equation. Then that will spend, or that will just like save a lot of times. Okay, so um, this one, okay, I recommend you to write ion equation right away. So the solid form, the precipitate form here we mentioned, okay, how does it look like? You can see uh, right here, we got some examples. For example, magnesium hydroxide, Aluminium hydroxide. Some of them they will have color like iron two hydroxide, iron three hydroxides. Okay, so right here, okay, we got a videos. Okay, uh, you can check. Okay, some of the reactions between the alkaline and the metal ions. Okay, forming precipitate. The reaction is quite fast. Once you pour the alkaline into the metal ions solutions, they will turn into precipitate very quickly. So, uh, you can check your textbook. Okay, you should have a table like this one. Uh, basically, okay, you will see that, okay, they include three different sections. The first one, we add a small amount of sodium hydroxide or ammonia. Just that I did mention, okay, ammonia, it doesn't look like a hydroxide because it doesn't have OH right there. So, ammonia, you just consider that as a OH minus will do, okay? So, uh, you add a small amount, then you will see that the one below, Okay, the calcium ion, they will have right precipitate, magnesium, white right precipitate, aluminium, white right precipitate, and they have corresponding color okay, of the precipitations, okay? So just one thing I have to remind you is about the uh, uh, silver oxide. This one is not silver hydroxide, this one is silver oxide. Just pay attention to this one, this equation will do. Uh, but seldom see in the public exam. But anyway, okay, you can have a look. You just know that that will be dark brown will do. Okay, and then, okay, the other one, okay, you can see that if I further add the NaOH in it, or to make it as excess, 
okay, to make it as accessible means by that. For example, uh, you got a solution at the beginning, or okay, you just have some sodium ion, uh, you have some, uh, say, for example, uh, aluminium ion in it, okay, AlCl3, okay, aluminium ion in it, okay, and then you try to add some alkaline, okay, maybe a few drop of sodium hydroxide then that would be called small amount of sodium hydroxide added. But if you say excess, that means you're going to pour more than enough. Then when you pour a lot of sodium hydroxide in it, then that will be adding in excess. We well, you know that, okay, if a small amount adding in it, okay, they will have certain observation. But some of them, they if you add excess sodium hydroxide, okay, the precipitate form, after they form, they will redissolve. I'm oh, sorry, that one is insoluble. So you'll find that they will redissolve, dissolve to form colorless solution. Can you see that? Some of them, they will dissolve and form colorless solution, while the others, they may be, uh, remain insoluble. Not only adding excess sodium hydroxide, it will do like that. If you add excess ammonia, you'll find that some of them, okay, they will have like dissolve. But some of them, okay, they will even form other color. Okay, if this one is pale blue precipitate, then that one is deep blue precipitate. And some of them, they will dissolve to form colorless solutions. Okay, so uh, you'll find it, okay, uh, actually, uh, you have to remember which one will form what kind of PPT, which one will redissolve in excess NaOH, and which one will redissolve in excess ammonia. Okay, so uh, this table, I don't think the organization is good enough. Okay, so therefore I put it back, okay, put it in another form. Okay, so uh, I would like you to write this down in your notebook. Okay, so uh, let's have a look how does it look like. So uh, it looks like this. Okay, so uh, I have already put all the color, uh, the white precipitate iron, like the magnesium iron, lead to iron, aluminium iron, and zinc iron. Okay, we put them together. All these four of them, they will give white precipitate. While the copper 2 plus, okay, they give the blue precipitate. You just remember the color that will do. Every 2 plus should be pale green, okay, but when the precipitate form, okay, it give a dirty green precipitate. Iron 3 iron, okay, just like the rust, okay, so therefore they will have a reddish brown PPT. And silver iron, okay, they form a dark brown precipitate. But do remember the silver iron, okay, just how we mentioned, this one is silver oxide, okay, it's a silver oxide. It is not a hydroxide one, okay. For the rest of them, okay, they should be the hydroxide one, okay. So, uh, for example, just give a quick example, for example, uh, lead 2, okay, maybe lead 2 hydroxide. Okay, maybe Fe, okay, maybe Fe2 hydroxide, iron 2 hydroxide, things like that, okay. Just only silver is a bit more expe uh, uh, special for that, okay. So, if you arrange that way, okay, what would be the advantage of using this table? You find that, okay, on the right-hand side, okay, the first column, that will be excess amount of soda sodium hydroxide. So, for the sodium hydroxide, these three of them, if you arrange it in a correct sequence, okay, the lead to aluminium iron, zinc iron, three of them, okay, the precipitate will redissolve and become colorless solution. What means by redissolve? You can check this one, even if it is not this uh, chemicals, okay. The solid one, after you add excess NaOH, they will redissolve. Redissolve, that means that uh, it, you won't see the precipitate anymore, okay, the solution become clear. Okay, because that is colorless, so therefore it will be, yeah, redissolved and colorless solution. Okay, uh, for the rest, okay, you just know that if you didn't see anything on this column, okay, that will be insoluble. That means if you continue add sodium hydroxide in it, even in excess, this blue PPT, it won't dissolve again. It will just stay there. Okay, so uh, there is uh, two arrows right here. You can see that, okay? You just extend it uh, to this column. In excess ammonia, in excess ammonia, you'll find that only zinc hydroxide, only zinc hydroxide, the precipitate, will redissolve in excess ammonia. While the copper 2 hydroxide, copper 2 hydroxide, it not only redissolves, but also, okay, you can see that the precipitate, blue precipitate here, it will form a deep blue solution, 
Okay, will form a deep blue solutions. I'll tell you the reasons or in the equations very quickly. Okay, but you have to know that. Okay, the overall equation, our uh, overall observation will be look like this. Okay. Just one more thing, okay? Uh, it doesn't include in this uh, table, okay? Just sell them as, okay? But anyway, remember the silver oxide form. Actually, it will be also forming a uh, redissolve and forming a colorless solution as well. However, the equation, uh, it won't show in the test book, okay? I'm not going to uh, talk about that as well, okay? So basically, okay, most of the time, okay, remember, small amount, what would be the color of PPT? In excess amount, which one will be dissolved? Only three of them. In excess ammonia, which one? Two of them, okay? What would be the observation? One will be redissolved, the sink one. While the copper two, okay, they will become the, uh, deep blue solutions, okay? So uh, basically using this concepts, okay, it can help you to identify what kind of metal ions inside the solutions. Later on, I will demonstrate uh, one of the examples, okay, how we can use this to help us to identify the metal ion in it, okay? Just remember, emphasized so many times, the sink hydroxide, we redissolve no matter it's sodium hydroxide or ammonia. Okay, so this one is quite special. You have to bear in mind. Okay, so uh, the equations. Okay, what really happening in it? Okay, so you can have a look. Okay, if you have a sodium uh, aluminium hydroxide, sink hydroxide, and lead two hydroxide form, or uh, basically lead is two plus, so you have two OH, sink is two plus, so you have two OH. Al is three plus, so you have three OH. So imagine, okay, uh, this one, okay, you got a a man, okay, and then you have like three wife, okay, well, a lot of wife, okay. Just uh, imagine this is a male, or it is female, so this one, okay, and just get to another country, and that country allow, okay, the man have many wife, okay, not stereotype, okay, but really do have like uh, in Middle East, okay, they have this kind of countries, okay. So if you like have, um, they can have maximum four wives, okay, then you will find that, okay, um, this aluminium, okay, will quickly not only three wives, okay, they he will try to grab one more okay so therefore when aluminum hydroxide okay they get one more then overall will become negative why would be like that okay you just think like this you have al3 plus and then you bond with an oh minus you bond with oh minus you bond with oh minus now you got the third fourth one oh minus so you got one neck or uh, one negative from each of the hydroxide and then you got three positive in the center so when they group together that must be one negative outstanding. Is that right? So this one we call it a complex ion. Complex ion. So the way to write a complex ion, you've got a square blanket, aluminium, you group with 4 OH minus, and then this one becomes negative. So again, the aluminium is 3 plus, OH minus is one negative. So uh, you have four in total, so it would be four minus, or in totals, okay, they would become uh, one negative, okay? So using the same method, okay, so you can find that same hydroxide, again, this one is two plus, this one is four minus, so you add together, it will be two negative. So for the lead, it will be PB, this one should be two plus, now you have four negative, so overall, it will be two negative. So things like that, okay? So if you really form a compound, so for example, it react with sodium, then maybe the things will look like this. A -L -N -A -A -L -O -H bracket 4 okay? So a uh, hidden one, you should have like a positive here, you have a negative here. So the combination will do like that, okay? So this one you call a complex ion. So uh, to help you to memorize better, do remember, okay, just like yet Thai system okay so you just have one male and then now you have four OH so therefore you can have more than okay the one original they can accept okay for for example AL is original is three now it can allow them to have one more okay only these ions okay these are uh, this metal ion can accommodate so many hydroxide the other metal ion okay they cannot combine like that okay just because the instability of the final product okay so remember four of them it will do like that okay so this ion because it is iron okay it will dissolve in the solutions okay iron is soluble right most of the time the ion are soluble so therefore you'll find that they will dissolve in the solutions so you may ask oh do we need to memorize these terrible names?
If you can, that would be happy. If you can't, let it go. Okay, so uh, tetra, that means four. Hydroxo means OH. Aluminate. Okay, remember the one ending with ATE. Okay, that will be a uh, polyatomic ion. So tetrahydroxo syncate. Okay, and then you have like plumbate. What's plumbate? Okay, that is PB. Okay, the Latin names of lead. Okay, so this will be the equation set uh, you need to remember. I urge you to remember the equation, okay, and also the formula of the complex ion, okay? So, next one, okay, is about redissolve in excess ammonia or uh, ammonia solutions, okay? So, ammonia, okay, some of you may feel confused. So, ammonia really have a alkaline gas you learned in previous videos. But actually, the NH3, we can dissolve it into the solutions and form NH3AQ. Okay, uh, actually next videos, okay, we'll talk a little bit more about this one. But right now you just think about, oh, it is a ammonia solutions. Okay, so that will be an aqueous form. So when you look uh, and do the equation this time, okay, uh, previously we said that, okay, in a little amount, little amount, for example, uh, sink uh, into small amount of ammonia how to write this equation okay basically saying or oh, ammonia is oh minus okay so i have sorry this one should be sink iron okay so saying two plus oh, oh minus and then form saying oh bracket two this is how you write if it is a small amount but when uh, we talk about these two special equation it is not the same you can see that okay saying hydroxide it grabbed with two hydroxide now, okay, we're 4 NH3, okay? So, you'll find out, okay, this time what we are doing, okay? The sink, okay, just dump the OH minus. I don't like OH minus right now, okay? I don't like these two OH minus. What I like is this ammonia. So, the sink will then grab the 4 ammonia together like this, okay? So, if you... If you're smart, you'll find that saying original is 2 plus. And ammonia actually is a neutral uh, molecule. So even your 4, 5, 6, uh, whatever it is, okay, it will equal to 0. So when they add together 2 plus and plus 0, you'll find that it will become 2 plus. Same thing happened to the copper, okay? If you have 2 plus here, oops, sorry, if you have 2 plus here, oh, sorry, if you have 2 plus here, and then this one is zero. You add together, it still be two plus. Is that right? So, uh, then where are the OH minus? Okay, the OH minus simply these two OH minus just dump it out. Okay, just change your partner. Okay, originally you have two partner. Now you change them. Okay, into the other four. Okay, so uh, basically, okay, uh, this part okay, it is not included in an exam. But I think it will be more easy for you to understand. Don't care about the number here, right? First, okay. Uh, you just imagine, okay, you have the OH minus, uh, you have the H2O, even if it's not OH minus, okay? Uh, uh, because I can't find, really find that equation okay, uh, from the internet, okay? So, uh, for example, this one, I'll come by uh, 6 H2O, okay? So you've put the NH3 here, what happened? They just release, change, uh, change this H2O. Four of them, just change them one, two, three, four into NH3. Okay, so four of them being replaced, you just take it out. That will be all right. Okay, so these will be the equations. Okay, remember you have to memorize it. So in this format, one more thing. Okay, in this format, okay, the color is in deep blue solution. Bear in mind, deep blue solution. This is not PPT, okay? So original is a pale blue PPT. Now become deep blue solutions. So you can see solid right there, okay? Now right here, no solid, okay? So uh, just have a uh, video so about the reactions of the copper to iron and with excess ammonia here. Okay, that one is a very nice video, so you can have a look, okay? How the... Or color change or redissolve or the precipitates, okay, happens in it. So to help you to memorize better, okay, for these equations, okay, basically they dump OH minus and go to NH3. So you can think about like they don't like a guy, okay, they don't like the girls, okay, they dump the girls, okay, get to the guy, okay. So you can think of like Zong To Okay. 
Okay, just help you memorize better. Okay, so we have yet full door tie and then zhong tou jun gei both of the equations. Okay, to make the PPT become a uh, resolved. Okay. Uh, now okay, have a look of the class practice. Okay, consider the following experiments. Okay, we have KOH to uh add it to the magnesium nitrate. So magnesium nitrate actually is a metal ion. Okay, and you have hydroxide. So uh, for each of them, you have to write an ion equation, color of the precipitate form, and describe with the aid of react equation if uh, the alkaline add in excess. Okay, so our uh, first one is pretty simple. You have magnesium ion, you have hydroxide. So you add together will be magnesium hydroxide. What will be the color of it? That will be white in color. Okay, uh, second. Part two, okay. If you have uh, the color, okay, that would be white in color, white PPT, okay. And then, uh, with the aid, okay, if you add in excess magnesium hydroxide, add in excess, actually it won't redissolve. So therefore, our observation will be no observable change, no observable change. Or you may say, oh, the the white PPT remains undissolved. White PPT remains undissolved. Okay, so uh, that would be part A. Okay, part B. Okay, ammonia with iron two sulfate. First of all, it's a small amount, so therefore the first part. Okay, you can write like uh, Fe two plus Fe two plus plus two OH minus because it's a small amount, right? So I can write OH minus directly. So that will be our uh, first part. Second part, okay, that will be iron two hydroxide. Iron two hydroxide should be dirty green PPT. Okay, dirty green PPT. Okay, third part, okay, if I add ammonia in excess, ammonia in excess, sorry, iron two hydroxide also have no reaction. So again, you just copy, okay, no observable change or the dirty green remains undissolved, that will be all right. Okay, so this table, okay, basically, okay, you just solve this on your own, okay, to tell me whether they will be redissolved or not. So one last example, okay. So uh this one, okay, remember I said that okay, uh knowing the color of the precipitate it can help you to identify the metal ion. So this is the case. An unknown solution contain two compounds. When this solution is heated with excess sodium hydroxide, okay, so you pay attention to excess sodium hydroxide okay a pungent gas evolves okay pungent gas with sodium hydroxide heating so obviously this one should be the nh4 plus right because we know that nh4 plus with oh minus when we heat them warm with the sodium hydroxide heat with sodium hydroxide ammonia gas will be given out pungent gas must be talking about this okay so the first one will be the cation and then white precipitate form. Oh my God, white precipitate. We have a lot of white precipitate. Okay, uh, which one would be the white precipitate then? You have like uh, calcium ion, magnesium ion, aluminium ion, PP two plus, and also zinc two plus. These kind of ions, okay, they will also form white precipitate. Okay, but do remember in excess we still can see that. Okay, so right here you should not have. Sing two plus because sing hydroxide it can add in excess and then form sing sing a uh, complex ion is that right and also pb2 plus and also aluminium ion as well because they will also form the complex they won't form pbt in excess Okay, you can't see the white PPT in excess because in excess they will become colorless solution. So leaving behind you just calcium ion and magnesium ion. So we can rule out, okay, it won't be one. Okay, it will be two and three. Okay, so this is how we do. But one thing, okay, I forgot to remind you that will be the calcium. Uh, calcium will react with the hydroxide to form the PPT. Uh, yes. It can form with hydroxide to form calcium hydroxide. Okay, that would be a solid. But you say, oh, calcium hydroxide, it should be lime water. Okay, it can dissolve. You are correct as well. Remember, calcium hydroxide is slightly soluble. 
So in case you have uh, calcium ion solutions, and then you try to add a small amount, very, very small amount of hydroxide in it, you will find that it won't turn into white PPT right, ahead, right away. So you have to add a lot, a lot, a lot of OH- many in excess. So even the calcium hydroxide they form, okay, then they cannot redissolve, they cannot dissolve, okay, into the solution. Then at that time, okay, you will see the white precipitate. Okay, calcium ion will also dissolve or will also form white precipitate, okay, with the hydroxide ion. So finally, a very summary, okay, uh, did mentions, okay, for calcium ion, okay, just add it here. Okay, you got the white precipitate as well, okay, you have to remember the uh, table right here. You have to remember which one will be dissolved in excess NaOH, which one will be dissolved in ammonia, what will be the color, and also the complex ion equation, you got it right there. Do pay attention to the charge. It is pretty simple, okay? So, uh, last one, okay? Uh, the silver ion, okay? The precipitate form is Ag2O, and it can also re dissolve in excess ammonia. However, okay, it is not included, okay, in DSC to write the equation as well, okay? So, uh, basically, okay, that will be the reactions of the alkaline, okay? 3A and then 1M. Okay, this M is not metal, okay, emphasized so many times, okay? So that's all for this video. Bye-bye.